Hey guys, how's it going? Lunar Complex here. I'd like to show you guys a project I'm working on. It's basically another video game, and I know I'm making two right now, and that's probably very bad to do, but this game's gonna be mostly about gameplay and leveling up your character, getting the best gear, all that fun stuff, trying to get the high score, and my other game is mostly gonna be focused on story, so while I'm trying to develop gameplay elements, I kind of am using this game as a field test kind of thing, so I can you know, get my bearings down. And in this video, I kind of want to go over XP curves and how I get to that. And as well as uh, curves for your parameters like attack and defense and magic attack and magic defense and all that sort of stuff, both for your actor and your enemies. And before you start doing anything, you're going to need three, I believe it's three plugins. Cianfly is core engine plugin, so you can change the max gold because you want to have the more, I want to be able to have your character collect so much gold in this game, it's, it's going to be great. I don't believe changing these three is very necessary because the next plugin overrides these anyway because it's below it. But you do want to make sure you change these, your enemy max HP, max MP, and enemy parameter. I'm going to have my level cap in this game be 200 and I want to extend it to 500 eventually. But for now, enemies are gonna need a lot of stats and so are your actors. Basically, you wanna utilize this to change some max stats. Next, you're gonna want to have base param control. So where you control your character's parameters. And this is basically where you wanna change your custom maxes. For all these maxes, I put in the max number you have, which is one less than one million. That's on all stats. And actually, there are four plugins. So you're gonna want to also include the plugin that kinda goes with it the um, X class base param so this is basically where you can edit class parameters and you want to grab this so where you can actually change the formula for each stat on your actor and then way down here we have enemy levels this basically allows you to take this formula right here and use it like you would the other plugin so this basically controls all your stats for your enemies you would just change these right here to um, max HP, gold, or defense or anything like that. And I do believe you have to change some of the level caps, maximum level, level cap, and uh, default type I'm going to have set to 5, which means that highest level of all actors that are in the battle party, they're just little options you can have, so it'll create the initial level off the set of rules here. And you have your level fluctuations here. Default positive level fluctuation for all enemies. Enemies could either be zero to three above your actors. And here we have the negative ones, so either zero or negative three below your actors. And I mean, I should probably change this positive fluctuation to one, so enemies can only be one level higher, but I might change that later. I believe there is a way to do that right here. So usually in any of these kind of options yanfly includes a command to change them in game so you would just uh, go and change that if you want an area or something like that to be more difficult higher level enemies and you know that stuff but for the most part my enemies are going to be kind of balanced toward the player at least that's what i'm going for right now could change in the future who knows but with those four plugins you can do some seriously really awesome things in your game and make things look cool. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of it now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue a file I have loaded. In this file, I have basically given the characters some simple weaponry. So like uh, a bronze long sword, and we have a bronze kind of tipped arrow thing. And then we have a magic tome. I basically am going to have this game include a melee range and magic actor. And you know, magic's going to heal, range is going to be range stuff and melee is going to be melee stuff and so i'm going to go ahead and attack this bat and uh all of my actors are level one right now and this is a level one bat and so you can kind of see things are pretty much balanced so far all right this should be the final attack hopefully it dies nope misses that's just great all right so i crit it died and uh we gain a pretty good amount of xp i'm probably gonna have to increase that based on lower levels uh, players will gain more XP or something like that and then we have gold blah 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 so that was a pretty even battle uh, we're not all damaged a whole bunch and we could just grab a potion but I'm gonna go ahead and level all of our characters to 99 by just clicking that obelisk there and as you can see my melee actors parameters has um, two of its highest in attack and defense two mid tier stats are agility and luck and low is uh, magic based because your melee guy isn't gonna cast any spells or anything like that and if we just go ahead and look at the ranged actor we have highest is in agility and luck I was kind of iffy about doing this because uh, I might change their attack with their luck or something like that but rangers are kind of you know they're very agile so I've, I made their highest 
parameter be agility. So I might change that and make it attack or something like that based on what they do because everyone's default attack is actually going to be based on their physical damage. So like a spell book, if you just do a default attack, will actually do something. And then for our magic actor, we have highest in uh, magic attack and magic defense, as you would assume, and very low physical damage and physical defense. And also, if you've noticed, I believe all of these should be very close to the other character's equivalent level stats. So like the physical attack here, 7788, should be pretty close to the lowest parameter in our melee actor. Yeah, it's only six off. And then likewise, an arranged actor for whatever low is there. Yeah, it's pretty close. And I'll explain how to do that in a sec, but I just want to demonstrate. I leveled up my character 98 levels, and this battle should still be pretty balanced. Yeah, so more or less, we are doing damage to the enemy, even though the enemy is level 97. Everything seems to be still pretty balanced. And there's our XP we gained, there's some gold, and we're going to go ahead and level up our characters one more time to level 197, three levels off the maximum, and we're going to do some damage now, see if it's still kind of balanced. And yeah, for the most part, I believe it is balanced. The magic user obviously, whoops, well, I can attack my own players, so that's interesting. Maybe do a kind of a Final Fantasy VII thing there. As you can see, everything seems pretty balanced balanced the magic user is hitting a lot less but that is because they're using a um you know they're not casting any spells i haven't put any skills and abilities in here yet but yeah there we go uh gain some more xp and as you can see the xp does take a while to level up but you're going to be fighting more than one enemy later in the game but yeah that is kind of um just a little sample of what i'm working with or what i'm working on and I kind of want to show you how I got to these XP curves and all that stuff. Alright, so calculating my own XP rates and stats and all that stuff, I typically use Excel. Uh, it's a great way just to do some formulas and drag and drop it all the way down to 200 to see what, you know, eventually the stat will be at 200. If you don't have Excel, you could just use Google Spreadsheets. It should have all of the things you could do in this as well, for at least what I'm doing. Quickly uh, type out 1 to 200 or whatever you want your max level to be. I just do about like 1, 2, 3 here. I grab all of them and I grab this little plus icon and I scroll all the way down to, I don't know, 200. So it basically can count for you very quickly. And that's how I got those numbers over here. All right, and now I have, um, I have my column for levels. I have my column for total XP at levels. Your XP here is obviously going to be zero. You don't have anything. You start level one. But now at level two, how much XP do you want your character to have? And to figure this out, what I'm going to do is uh, click this little cell here and click in the formula box here and type in equals. So this value is going to equal something. And it's going to basically equal this level so level minus one and i'm going to wrap that in parentheses and that's basically to refer to level one uh the reason i don't want to click this cell in place of this is because if i decide to want to type one and then 10 100 and 200 i'd rather i have to refer to this cell to get the xp i need to be level 10 instead of the xp i need from level it's going to pick one and not nine so that's why i have to refer to its own cell here this is going to equal to this minus one and then you have to wrap that in parentheses and we're going to go ahead and do times 100. so to get to level two the xp we're going to need is 100 and if we drag and drop this down to 200 it will show us all of the xp we need to be that level but if we take a graph of this and to do that you would just select both of these columns without the headers i'm going to grab to 200 and we're going to insert recommended charts, this one, why not, hit OK, and there we go. And then this has to go up there, so I'm going to make it look a little bit fancy. Can I make this go up there or something? Just copy the chart, <laughs> get all the way back up here, and then just paste it works. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. For every level, we have uh, XP needed, and it's a very straight line. You could just see that this XP curve is very linear and we don't want that. We want it to get more difficult for the character to gain higher levels because there's more reward at a higher level. And you always hear of XP curves, not XP, whatever this is. This is not a curve. All right, so what I added was basically instead of, you know, times 100, 
I just put times itself. And um, as you can imagine, that is basically to get to level two, you need one times one. To get to level 16, you need 15 times 15. And as you can see, that is a nice curve. But still, uh, to get to level 200, you need just 199 times 199. And that's under 40,000 XP. That's not exactly what I think of level 200. You know, that just seems too easy. And I'll go ahead and put a little reference over here. So 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 150, 200. And over here, we're just going to copy this, basically. And then move those over. Enter. Scroll that down. There we go. So we have a nice reference here so we don't have to scroll all the way down. It's too easy, it seems, to get to level 200. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit more to this leveling thing right here. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to have level, and remember this A6 is, um, or whatever cell it may be, is level and then level minus 1. So we're going to do basically level minus 1 times 100, and then we're going to add level minus 1. And we're just going to add level minus 1. So we're going to hit enter, and we honestly don't have to use that to scroll all the way down. We could just type it in over here. I just want to make sure it lines up with level 5. And it does. All right, so if we scroll down, we get not really what we want to get. And yes, I do have to scroll this all the way down so it shows up on the graph. Wow, that's actually pretty linear. Yeah, so we're back at a very lame XP curve or line, whatever you want to call it. So what we got to do to kind of add a sort of difficulty to this is squaring something. Or if you want an even serious curve, cubing something. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this addition level here we're going to multiply it by itself. Then we're going to hit enter. Grab the cell. Move it all the way down. Alright, so now we have more of a curve that we want. And now to get to level 200, we need almost 60,000 experience. That's better than uh, 39,000 experience. So we're, we're kind of getting there. But let's see what happens when we increase this uh, number right here. So let's make 100 into 500. And now you need a lot of XP in the beginning. But then it kind of evens out by the time you get over here. And that does increase it by a lot. As you can see, it is 140,000. And our XP curve, well, it lined out almost. It kind of lost its dip. Basically, adding this number here makes it more difficult in the beginning for the player to start leveling up. Because things don't necessarily get more difficult toward the end. They're very difficult in the beginning. So I'm going to make this go back to 100. But what I'm going to do is... I'm going to cube this, so I'm going to multiply times itself again. All right, so that looks more like a difficult curve here. You can see that the very beginning of the game is pretty easy. It, at level 100, you'll have 1 million XP. So, okay, that doesn't sound too bad as long as you get a lot of XP from killing enemies. To double your experience, you only gain about 27 levels. And then to double your experience again, you're now up to 159. And then double that again and... Well, you're over 200, but to get to level 200 or close to 200, it's going to take you about 8 million XP. Now, XP in RPG Maker MV only goes up to 10 million minus 1, I believe, because of the limits of what they decide to do. I'm sure there's like a plugin to fix that, but I don't know why they would do that. I guess they just want to code in very small values, but I kind of want the uh, my max level in the game I'm making to be as close to the top of the XP as you can have it. So basically level 200 is 10 million XP or 10 million minus one. So you can actually get to level 200. And when you're trying to get to experience rates that are very, very large, multiplying this number right here really doesn't do anything to the final value. So for example, if I decide to change it here to, I don't know, 500, that's five times as much XP that's added here. But if I drag it down to level 200, we have 7.9 million. And it, it just went up like 80,000 XP. That's, that's nothing compared to, you know, the almost 8 million you need to get to level 200. So that's kind of why this value only dictates how difficult it is in the beginning of the game. So the thing we really need to change is a kind of modifier here. And not level minus one, because if we do that again it's going to go into the powers of four. And if I drag that down, you get very, very large numbers, 1.5 billion. Now, I would love to have that in my video game, obviously scaled to monsters giving you more XP, but RPG Maker MV can't handle that right now. And so it doesn't really affect gameplay because it's all gonna be balanced to uh, what a creature gives you in XP anyway. So what I'm gonna do here is add a mu multiplier. 
And this multiplier is going to be somewhere along the lines of 1.25. Let's see what that does. So it increases, you know, the level we need to level to by 1.25. That's not a lot. But if I scroll all the way down, you can see it affected the curve in a great deal. At least a lot more than adding um, level minus 1 times 500. If we go back to this curve, it still looks like a curve. But we're getting closer to that 10 mil. And in order to get there, I'm just going to keep adding on to this uh, times 1.5. Say times 1.25 by adding maybe a little bit to it. So times 1.3. Let's see if that works. As you can see at the bottom here, it is above 10 million. We don't want that. To quickly try and get to the limit of the amount of XP your character is going to have. Like I said, you could just put 200 here and then just work with that. So I'm going to do 1.28. And we get, we're getting closer. It, it's pretty close, but it's still above. So we're going to subtract one to it again. And we're almost there. Just going to keep messing with this number, see if we get there. And now it is somewhere in between 1.26 and 1.27. Keep in mind, though, you can edit this number, but it only makes the game harder in the beginning. So I'm going to add 150 now. That doesn't really change much. So I'm going to actually undo that. And then I'm going to add on 5 to this. So in between 1.26 and 1.27, and we are almost there. It is just almost there. I think I'm going to add a little bit to it with this. Put in 150 there. We are literally 2,000 away or 1,200 or 1,192 away. So I'm not sure how far in decimals RPG Maker MV can handle. So I'm actually going to just adjust this to 151. And we're almost there, 155. Here's where I'm going to just do a little bit of a kind of thing to do. But uh, since we're three over the maximum XP, I'm just going to put minus three there. There we go. Look at that. All fixed. So level 200, you have your max there. And we have most of the curve here still. So if I just copy this and click the cell here where we start it, paste it in there, and then we have to change these values to um, right here. So just double click, highlight the cell, H11, and then just click into the cell that we want it to actually go to. Hit enter, and um, it hasn't really increased the amount of XP we need to get to level 2 by much. And to get to level 10, we need 2323. 23. That doesn't seem too difficult or like too out of the scope of a RPG game. And I'm going to drag it all the way down here, and we have almost exactly what we want. That's close enough. I believe RPG Maker takes the ceiling of any number. I don't even think it rounds. If it did round up, it would go to 10 million minus 1 there, so all 9s. And that's kind of what I want. And this is the graph displaying the um, XP curve. And if you need some more help to kind of visually see what's going to happen in the game, how much XP you're going to need for every level, that's why I have this third column here. So right here at level 1, total XP we're going to have at level 1 is 0. Now we're going to have to figure out how much XP we need to get to level 2. So what we're going to just do is highlight the cell, hit equals, the XP, the total XP at level 2 minus the XP we have at level 1, and it shows us the same number here. Except when I drag it down a bit, it shows us how much XP we're going to need after every level to get to the next level. So if I drag that all the way down, disregard this last number because at level 200, we don't need to get to level 201, so there's no XP we need. This kind of gives you a visual number to see that at level 199, we need 150,000 experience to get to level 200. But at level 10, we need about 500 to get to level 11, so that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, if you think these numbers are higher, you obviously just edit the formula here, and it will just keep changing these. But I like to go a couple steps further. So I like to find out the, you know, every time you level, you need more XP. And I want to figure out the difference in that change of XP. So we have to start this at level 2, because at level 1, we haven't had to gain XP ever before level 1. There's no 0. You don't gain XP to level from 0 to 1. You, you start at level 1. So that's why we need to start here. And we're going to go ahead and type equals the square next to it. So the XP needed to get to level 3 from 2 minus the XP needed to get to level 2 from 1. And basically what this number means is at level 1 here, to get to level 2, we need 154. And I'm just rounding. 154 experience. All right. Now when we get to level 2, we're going to need 164 experience to get to level 3. So how much more experience has the game added on to achieve the next level? Well, it's about 10. So if I drag this all the way down, we see that by the end of the game, the game is going to keep adding on 1,400 more experience for me to get. 
So it's not that much, actually. I'd like that number to be higher, but with um, this many levels, I guess it's not really that necessary for me. But as you could see, in the uh, less than 10 levels, you're adding on double digits to the amount of XP you need every single level. And then it goes to the triple digits, and then by level 133, it starts adding on quadruple digits. I don't know, it's just something to help kind of get a feel for the game before you actually start playtesting because you don't want to keep all, you don't want to playtest your game to get this data. That's just, it takes too long. You want to kind of have a feel for what the XP rates are going to be in stats way before you actually start development in the game. Or at least I think this makes sense to do. Kind of gauge how, you know, high of level you want your characters to be and how balanced you want it to be. Now there's one extra step further I'd like to go into, which is the difference in difference. This calculates how much the XP changes, the difference of the amount of more XP you need to get, and the difference of, you know, each one of those at every level. It may sound confusing, but I hope maybe doing this will help understand. Since it's a difference, we just do what we did before. Equals this minus this. And we get 4.59. And if I scroll it all the way down, we should get the exact same number every time. Yep. Well, wait, why was the other one different? That's interesting. Can't figure it out right now. But basically what this number means is say you're at level four. The total amount of XP you have is about 500. To get to the next level is about 200. And that's 22 more XP than you needed to get to level four. And that's about seven and a half experience more than the amount you needed that was added on to get to the next level before. So... Hope that makes sense to you guys. This is just a nice way to visually see it and kind of gauge your XP rate throughout your game before ever really, you know, getting into it. And this is basically the XP curve that I'm going to probably add in my video game. Maybe I'll change it a little tiny bit, but currently I think this is probably going to be it. But wait, I haven't covered the stats yet, you know, like attack, max HP, max, you know, whatever. And I'll do that right now. For attack, I basically took the same concept except scaled it down. Since max stats can't go over 1 million, they can only go up to 1 million minus 1 instead of XP, which can do 10 times as much, I had to kind of scale things back a bit. So at level 1 here, your attack stat is basically going to be, I don't know, I put 20 for here. And the formula I used for it is the actual level next to it, not level minus 1 this time. I'm not sure why I chose to do it this way. Times 20, and then um, I did do a cube in here but it's multiplied by a very small number. So this curve actually goes up like a, a real curve. If I just grab these and do an insert chart, you can kind of see that um, it's actually a very horrible looking one since I only have five data points. You can kind of see it goes up like a curve. At least it's not a straight line from like zero to the final point there. But this isn't mainly for the attack stat. This is, in my game, the highest you can have in any parameter, its base score at the max level, is 100,000. I think that's pretty good. I think that's fair. And then the lowest stat you can ever have is 58,000. And then I just go a little bit in between each one until I get to the max stat. And to do that, I kind of change things um, very gradually. So here we have level times 20, and then uh, the level cubed, and then times this number right here. Now for the next step below it, I have two minus what I had over here. So that was, so over here was times 20. Over here I have times 18. And then I subtract 0 0.001 from the final number there. And that gives me a final value at max level of just about 9,000 less than your highest stat can be. I think that's pretty good. And then I just kept doing the same. So minus two to the multiplier there, minus 0 0.001 here, which, makes um, 0 0.010, but you could just get rid of the zero. And then minus two again, and then minus 0 0.001, and then so on and so forth until I got to 10 here. So your lowest stat in the beginning of the game is going to be around 10, but your highest stat's 20, and then in between you get to kind of, you don't choose, but I chose for the uh, classes, uh, 18, 16, 14, and 12. And then they go up to here once they're level 200. And uh, as you saw before, melee has the highest of its stats in attack and defense. Magic has um, special attack and special defense. I'm doing special instead of magic because I think in melee, its skills are going to have a kind of special thing to it. It's not going to actually be a physical damage, so I kind of changed it just to special. And then range, I have the highest in agility and, you know, sort of that's 
stuff. And now let's look at HP. Max HP, like I said before in the other stats, caps at 1 million, or 999,999. The same with magic points, mana points, whatever you want to call it. They're just like a regular parameter. Typically in RPGs, I believe you have a lot more HP than you do maybe in an actual stat, or at least in this game you will. So as you can see, the max stat you can have at the max level in my game is going to be 100,000, give or take any bonuses you have on your character. However, for HP, it's going to be 1 million, or, you know, 999,999. Because I think having a higher amount of HP is kind of good to have. I mean, you can scale it down to where, you know, you could scale it to anything that you want. So HP could be higher, but every time you get hit, you always get hit for a little bit more. And then I kind of don't think I want mana or magic points or whatever you want to call them to be above HP in any way. I kind of like HP to be the really big number in character stats. And so I put 500,000 for the most magic points you could ever have in the game. So I kind of like HP being at 1 million, mana points being at, you know, half of that. And then your uh, rest of the six stats being at least the highest one being one-tenth of your hit points. And then, um, you know, it's just going down to your lowest. And with my HP formula, I just kind of have um, level times 400, and then the addition is level cubed, and then just a percentage of that of 11.5%. And if we take the graph of this right here, it should be very similar. Yeah, see, very similar to that. The only difference is I believe it's a little bit more steeper than all of these because the modifier to this is 1.2% um, to the um, level cubed while it's 11.5% here. So yeah, this curve's a lot greater. But you want to gain so much more XP in the end game. At least I believe I think that's fun to have almost a million HP. And then by the time you're level 200... 100,000 attack or something like that. All right, and now to add these in your video games. If we go to the, our database icon here with the gears, we go to classes. We have that bit of code we can uh, copy paste from X class base parameter control. So just copy this and put it here. And I translated the um, stat formulas, XP formulas, whatever you want to call them, into code here. In place of every one of those boxes, like A5 or something, you just put level and that's basically it. That's really all you have to do. Now, however, I did not change this level stat right here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So as we calculated, we have uh, level minus 1 times 156 plus level minus 1 cubed, and then we have that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, open up RPG Maker, highlight this, paste it in there. Get rid of the equals, and then just type in level wherever you see that. And then there we go. And then make sure you have your semicolon at the end there. Not sure if it matters, but it might. And then like before, my highest uh, for my melee class is going to be level times 20 plus level cubed times 1.2%. And I'm not sure if you can do like level to the cube, but or to uh, the power of three. Not sure, but I just decided to do level times level times level. In case you couldn't, I haven't tried. Maybe you can, but I really don't expect a whole lot from RPG Maker considering... It has a lot of weird little flaw, well not flaws, but just limits. So yeah, I just decided to do that. And before I forget, I should probably copy this XP curve and apply it to all of these. All right, and now for the enemy. So the enemy parameters, uh, a little bit more interestingly set up, I guess. If we go to the enemy levels Yanfly plugin here, we have this right here, this note tag, custom parameter stat formula. And then you replace stat with whatever stat you wanted it to replace, including gold and XP. So that's pretty nice. And actually, as you can tell, I believe I put the same exact formula in for all of these. Although for every one of its stats, it is um, level times 20 plus level cube times 1.2%. While for our classes, it, it's it's 1.2% over here for our highest skill. So... These enemies, all of their stats are their highest skills, basically. They're all equal. And now for a bat, I'm probably going to subtract some to its uh, defense or something and then keep its agility at its max stat. So if I want to uh, to decrease its um, attack parameter to 1.1% or 0 0.011, it'd basically get me this value right here because this is the 0 0.011 modifier here to this uh, cubed. But this is 18, so if I wanted to, I should probably also bring this down to 18. 
but that's if I wanted to. Right now, I'm not going to worry about it because I want it to all be equal to test that out, kind of have a base. And then uh, depending on what monster it is, say if it's a rock type, I'll increase its defense by so much more than just these uh, stats. And then I decrease others and do that sort of stuff. And then for its um, XP formula, so the amount of XP uh, your character gains, you kind of have to keep messing with this. And so far what I've been able to come up with is level times 5 plus level squared times 5%. And then we add on level times 10 and what that looks like is uh, this value, this column here is exactly for this, where it's XP drops, so the amount of XP your enemy drops. So if we just copy these same values here, and we type in here what we have there, there's our level times 10, there's our level squared, but not times, that would have been a very big number. So 5% is 0 0.015, enter. There we go, that's a bit better. And then level times five. So if we drag and drop this, you, can gu you guys can kind of see at which level how much XP you're gonna get and then you can compare that with how much XP you need to level so at level 1 we need to kill about 10 enemies to get to level 2 and then at level 10 we're gonna have to kill 4 enemies which is actually not what I want at level 50 we get um 787 and at level 50 we need okay more than 10 of those kills okay that's that's looking a little bit better uh, at level 100 we get 1650 and at level 100, we need that much XP. So so at level 100, we need uh, 37, 7, 27. And if we divide that by 1650, we get uh, 22 monsters. I don't think that's that bad because um, I think I'm going to have maybe a major change happen every 20 levels or 10 levels. So you're probably going to have to kill maybe 200 monsters to kind of progress to the next tier of something, say like weaponry or armor or areas in a level. So I don't think that's that bad. Uh, I could, uh, obviously I could just edit this and say level five, drag that down. And that decreases everything by a lot, actually. I, I think I like this more. So it's going to take five enemies to get to level 11 at level 10. We have um, 1100 here instead of 1600. So that's going to take at least probably 30 enemies. So that actually looks better. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. And with those changes, I'm going to go ahead and test this real quick for you guys. So let's see, we're all level 1, and we have our best uh, gear we have on, or our low tier gear. So keep that in mind, while I'm level 99, I'm still using the worst gear you can have. Alright, so I'm level 1 right now. This bat's level 2, and it's pretty difficult. Yeah, I probably won't be able to defeat this bat because it's only one level above all three of us. But that's why I said you can use Yanfly's plugin commands here to change this positive fluctuation to um, zero whenever you first begin the game. So what I would do is create a common event that would keep running throughout the whole entirety of the game. And then when player reaches like level 10, change that fluctuation. That actually be a pretty good thing to do. So at every 10 levels of your players, just keep changing that fluctuation even more so that they have a higher chance of with enemies that are 10 levels above them or 20 levels above them. Okay, so they have a very, very roundabout way of doing things. You would first have to create a variable of a game data actors level or xp so that's that's interesting after you create that then you can do a conditional branch based on the variable and then uh, do some yan fly command at that point that is kind of just a little bit of what i wanted to go over with you guys and hopefully some of this can help you in your game whether you're figuring out xp curves or rates or things like that and thanks for watching